From the eternal sea he rises, creating armies on either shore, turning man against his brother until man exists no more. Ave Santane. Pain has a face. Allow me to show it to you. What up, ghouls? I'm a person, and this is a channel. Let's talk about the omen, because it's awesome. You've heard the warnings. It's just a church. Something wrong? No, he's just trembling all over. You've seen the signs. It's a birth mark. Three sixes. Now the time has come. Damien, it's all for you. Your wife is in danger. She's not a human child. Don't let him kill me. The Omen, on the all-new Collector's Edition today. The Omen came out in 1976 and was directed by Richard Donner, who would go on to create such classics such as Superman, The Goonies, and Lethal Weapon. It's based on an idea by Robert Munger, produced by Harvey Bernhard, and written by David Seltzer. The movie stars Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, David Warner, and Harry Stevens plays the iconic Damien. The movie actually had a few uh, alternate titles while it was still in the pre-production and even in the production process. The original title for this movie was The Antichrist, pretty appropriate, but kind of gives things away a little bit, don't you think? And then the next um, alternate title that they had used was uh, The Birthmark. Ultimately, they decided to settle on The Omen. Uh, it's a very ominous sounding title. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't really give too much away like the original title, The Antichrist, does. Because they actually did sort of want this to be sort of a mystery, at least throughout some parts of the movie, until it's ultimately revealed at the end that Damien is indeed the Antichrist. Um, speaking of Damien, it's weird. He's remembered as this evil child, you know, as the star of the omen. But really, he's a background character. You don't really see him a lot. He's kind of just a suggestion of evil. You, they got a little kid that was able to, you know, look creepy, and they just mostly let him be silent, and that speaks for itself, you know. He would just look creepy, not say very much, and then you could project your ideas of evil onto him. But no, he's not really the star of this movie. The movie is actually centered around Gregory Peck's character, Robert Thorne, on his journey of horrific discovery of the truth about his son. It's told with fantastic pacing that puts storytelling to the forefront over like cheap thrills, uh, gags, and kills. And the movie has a level of maturity and seriousness that gives it a weight and credibility that this is something that could possibly maybe actually happen. The acting is fantastic, solid, top-notch by everyone involved. They actually help to elevate this material to even higher levels. So you've got such talents in there like Richard Donner and the actors involved. They really elevated this to a higher level than what maybe it would have been in another director's hands. It could have been schlocky. Instead, this was handled with care. It was, it was t they took great care to make sure that they presented a, a serious story that you could get wrapped up in and possibly even start to believe the hype of this movie, you know? And that's exactly what it did back in the 70s when it came out. It kind of did cause a stir and it caused people to re-examine the Bible, especially chapter 13 revelations and stuff. The Omen is actually one of those movies that's notorious for having had a curse on the movie in which a lot of shit, a lot of bad shit went wrong. Uh, people even died and stuff. Um, I don't know how much I believe this, but, you know, it. I think that a lot of stuff happened and then they used maybe somebody in marketing used that, uh, made it sound worse than it was in order to help sell the movie, The Omen, you know, oh, it's scary, it's The Omen, it's cursed, whatever. Um, one, of, I think one of the people that worked on the movie, I think it was the producer, <laughs> he's talking about the curse of The Omen, he says, the devil didn't want us to make this movie. The devil was really, I really sincerely believe that the devil didn't want the picture to be made. But, uh, I don't know, I don't think that's the case. The Omen is actually a celebration of Satan. If anything, it's not that 
these things happened because he didn't want the movie made. I'd say these things happened because you invited darkness into the world, into the material world. You invited darkness onto the set by celebrating it. That's the way I see it. Uh, you know. Uh, anyway, yeah, a lot of stuff happened. I'm not actually going to go into detail because it's too much to mention. Whole documentaries have, has been made on the subject of the Curse of the Omen. So if you're interested in that, go check those out. They're rather interesting. As previously stated, this movie is driven more by atmosphere, by tension, uh, suspense. Like I said, the pacing is not too quick to try and get to the punch, you know. It's not too quick to try and get to the next death scene. Uh, they really dole out the story and let you soak it in. Uh, this is one of the things that I love about this movie. And you guys know that these are the kind of movies I tend to like. So you can tell that the great care was taken and they really, really wanted to spin a good story for you and not rush through it. It does ultimately culminate into a very intense, uh, exciting climax. But yeah, throughout the first half of the movie it is very drawn out slowly paced starts to build up builds up builds a little bit momentum uh that is awesome that's the kind of thing i really love there are you know death scenes even though this is not necessarily considered like a straight up horror movie a lot of people do consider it more of a drama or a thriller or even a mystery but it when it does have a horror uh, scene, a death scene is very horrific and it's very memorable. Uh, excellent death scenes, great effects for the time. And I want to say that this does remind me an awful lot of Final Destination. Or I guess I should say Final Destination reminds me of The Omen because this came first. Where supernatural forces are at work causing these things to happen and accidents to happen to people. It's pretty cool, man. And I would imagine back in the day, just being in the theater, I bet everybody freaking screamed every time one of these things happened. Uh, pretty awesome, very exciting stuff. The, the movie itself is then completed by a Jerry Goldsmith's score for which he won, uh, I believe, an Academy Award for like best score for The Omen. It's satanic sounding, it's evil, it's dark. Yeah, it's creepy. It really, uh, man, it, it rounds out this movie. It gives it, like you feel like you're listening to a cult sing about the Antichrist when you hear this song. So it's like, wow, yeah, this movie must have scared the shit out of people back in the day. And I want to say that to me, for what I, the way I believe, the reason why I think that The Omen struck a chord with audiences then and still now is because of how uh, in the movie it's about the Antichrist. It's about absolute evil coming to Earth and trying to take over. And then in the end, fucking spoilers if you ain't seen The Omen, is that evil wins in the end of this movie. Uh, good tries to triumph, but evil wins. And that leaves people with this feeling of, you know, f fear of evil winning. It, it, I don't know if that was a, an idea that really was very big in movies back then. and still really isn't even now. A lot of movies always tend to go with a happy ending to give such a just a downer of an ending where it's like, yeah, we're all screwed because the Antichrist is here to stay. But the reason why I think it struck such a chord with audiences is because we have this potential towards evil within ourselves. And this is what we are sensing. This is what we are fearing when we go and sit in the dark of a theater and we watch this shit happening on screen. Now, bear with me here. I'm going to try and explain some stuff real quick. We live in a universe that is made entirely of duality, dichotomies. Everything has a fucking opposite in order to exist. Everything is up, has down, left and right, good, bad, uh, God and Satan, so on and so forth. Everything has a dual nature, including ourselves. We all have the potential towards good or the potential towards evil within us. We all have a good side and a dark side. Now, a lot of people will project these things onto external sources, uh, bigger ideologies. They project their good side as God, and then they project their dark side as Satan. So they're trying to get it out of themselves and put it out there and try and feel safer about it. Oh, God and Satan, you know, my good side, my bad side exists out there and the fight's between them two. And all I gotta do is sit here and try and be a good citizen. 
But movies like this, which is dealing with this, I guess you would call it this battle uh, uh, between opposites, between good and evil, it goes on within us. And then to have a movie end on the note that evil triumphs, that must have filled people with fear because even though they're projecting these ideas of themselves out onto bigger uh, ideologies, they're really dealing with themselves, with their own inner good and their inner bad. And so all of us are afraid that our dark sides, our inner dark sides might triumph and take over and win. So to see that in the movie, that's what the movie is suggesting to people on an individual level that, hey, you can try, you can try and battle your, your dark side, your shadow, but it might overcome, it might win. That's what's scary about the omen. That's the fear that it puts into people. They think they're thinking about stuff out there. This is dealing with everybody's internal struggle between good and evil. Um, that is powerful stuff, man. That is powerful stuff. That's what makes this movie pretty fucking awesome. Uh, let's just about get through this and wrap it up. I want to say I only have one thing I would complain about, and I'd say that uh, Damien, who is supposed to be this representation of absolute evil, as I said earlier, is more of a background character. He doesn't really do a whole lot in this movie. He's just kind of back there, and everybody's always talking about him and how evil he is or whatever. I would have liked to... A demonstration of his evil. He is the Antichrist, after all. And instead, he's just kind of a background character and a little kid. Now, there is the scene where he knocks his uh, mom off the uh, balcony or whatever. But then even he acts like it was an accident, like he didn't mean to. Like, he's kind of afraid of what he just did. So, as so the, the person that is supposed to be the devil on Earth... I would have liked to see some kind of demonstration of his evil and his power. We don't get that. Uh, this does kind of go, overflow into the next movie, Damien, The Omen 2, in which he doesn't really know that. He, he doesn't know that he's the Antichrist, and throughout the movie he finds out and stuff. Uh, even in the, the Damien, the, the, the Omen 2, he's actually a rather nice young man in that movie. He's very likable, actually, throughout the first half of the movie until he figures out he's the Antichrist. So I guess that was the idea. I, I guess that's what they were playing with, the idea that he doesn't really know. Um, but, you know, other people know the his protector, that nanny woman that comes in to, to protect him and stuff. But I really, that would be my only complaint. I could have used some kind of example of his actual evilness, but we don't get that, and it's okay. The movie itself is just too damn solid to let that actually bring it down. Let's rate it. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. Can I give it 666 stars? <laughs> I can't do that because I, I can't put all those stars on the screen. We're going to go with four and three-fourths stars out of five. Yeah, nearly perfect. Check it out if you've never seen it. Damn good. Uh, tell them Eric sent you. <laughs> tell them. I, that doesn't make any sense. But I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. I hope I got this. Ooh, I fucking better. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than stop recording and then going and starting on your project to realize, oh, Fuck, I forgot to mention everything. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention every fucking thing. All I did was talk about Satan. <laughs> I guess that's what the movie's about. Anyway, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to go edit. That's going to take a long time. Wish me luck.